Yesterday, I wrote a program in Kojo and Scala to make a very simple static histogram of the results of throwing two dice. And uh, today, I thought it would be far more interesting to have something animated. And uh, the result is what you see here. This is a simulation of throwing two dice. And there's a histogram that's plotted uh, as the rolls uh, are made. And you can see we're doing thousands of rolls here, um, about 400 or so rolls a second. And the uh, bars are growing. Um, so this is the number of twos and threes and so on, up to 12. These numbers on top is the counts of each. And you probably noticed that the sevens grows faster than the others, and that it is subdivided into six segments. And um, that's because there's six ways you can roll a seven with two dice. And there are two ways you can roll a three, a one and a two, and a two and a one. And there are three ways to roll a four, and so on. So you see here that uh, the first column represents um, a one and a six, and this represents a two and a five, and this represents a three and a four, and so on. Now, um, how did I do this? I did it with something called processing, and processing is a very cool system for doing animation and art and things like that. I'll show you an example of one of the little processing demos um, and the code that made that one. And a uh, typical processing program has a setup function and a draw function. And the setup gets called once and draw gets called multiple times. Um, so what you're going to see now is a processing program written in Scala, and I'm not using the processing IDE, or Integrated Development Environment. I'm using my preferred IDE, IntelliJ IDEA, which works very well with Scala. And the, the trick to getting it to work with processing is simply including one jar, which you'll find in the directory where you installed processing. So this core.jar um, adds processing's capability to a Scala or Java program. And I added the source code as well. I downloaded that from their GitHub site so that I can more easily understand what's going on. Papplet is the um, class that we extend with our class, Dice Histogram. Um, and I'm not going to go through all of it, but I'll just show the interesting bits. Um, why did I choose the bar width of 60? Well, it has to be subdivided into 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 parts. So uh, I just looked for the least common multiple of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and that number is 60. So it subdivides evenly. Um, in all these divisions. And spacing is set to 5. That's the space in pixels between the bars. And the number of bars is 11 because that's how many we can, that's how many outcomes there are with two dice, two six-sided dice. And here we make a random number generator. And here we keep track of how many rolls we've had so far. This is used so that we don't display the frame rate super fast. You could display it so fast that you couldn't even read it. Here, I think it's we're showing it twice a second. And we use two fonts, a very small one here and then a larger one here. That's what these are. And this is used to format the numbers. You notice the commas are there. That's a nice thing to do as a programmer. People um, are used to seeing comma or thousands separators. And um, this is kind of fun. This, f this finds all the possible ways of combining um, the one to six outcomes of two dice, and then groups them by the sum. And we use this later to do this subdividing. This is a, 
I love this about Scala that you can produce such a complicated um, result in such a short amount of code. So this is uh, this gives us a map of um, int to sequence of a tuple of two ints. So don't worry if you didn't get that. All right, I showed you a simpler processing program that had a setup and a draw, and here's the setup. And the first thing it does is, is set the size of the window, and it does that based on the bar width and the number of bars and the spacing. And then the height I just arbitrarily set to 600. You could make it a lot taller if you wanted to um, see more um, rolls before it resets and goes back to the beginning. Text align, smooth, no stroke, frame rate 2000. We're, this is what I'm asking for as a maximum, and we're not getting anywhere near it. This is a pretty fast computer here. Draw static draws the non changing portions, so it clears the whole screen and draws these numbers here. And that's what happens in setup, and everything else happens in draw and the code that draw calls. And just to, I'm going to scroll all the way down and let you see the size of this. So the whole program is 112 lines. Back up to draw. Here's how we randomly produce uh, 1 to 6 for one roll. And we do that twice, and then we get the sum. And then we use an array to um, keep track of how many we've had for each of the 2 through 11. And we increment the number of rolls, and then we display the status, which is this this part here. Then we need to um, find out the, um, so we've done, a, we've done a roll and we've got the sum and that gives us one of these bars. So now we need to calculate where to, to add on to. So each time we do a roll, we just add on to one of these bars and that's what's happening. So this, we're setting the X and Y uh, and then getting the uh, counts the count for this bar, and that's used to for the bar height. And uh, notice that these ones that are subdivided have a light color and then a darker color in um, a fraction of it. So we draw the line in a light color, and then we draw the, f the segment in a darker color. That's what this does. And you might be interested in this logic. It's kind of fun. It finds the number of ways of making the seven, for instance, and uh, sees which combination of dice it is and then draws the segment that corresponds to that. And then we need to clear the area right above the bar so that we can redraw the number that's the count. And that's, and th that's these parts, clearing it and then drawing that. And then we look to see if we've gotten too high, like we just did, and then we reset. Now let's look at some of these other functions. We'll just look at them in order. Reset. Resets the rolls, count to zero, and resets all the bar counters to zero, and then redraws the static portion. And display status produces this, and it... Um, the, the main part of it is this line of is this uh, line of text. This is a little bit of code to slow down the displaying of the frame rate. Draw static. Background 255 clears everything to white. And then we do um, 11 of these. And the final bit of code uh, provides a main method that tells the processing applet to run our um, to run our code. Okay, there you have it.